Hey everyone, Santat here, and welcome back to a teacher's guide to crafting in Rune Factory 4 Special Edition. Uh, in this episode, we'll be talking about advanced weapon crafting, and all the cool things you can do to craft the best weapons in the game, and all of that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen the previous stuff in the series, please do that, because you'll be referring to a lot of those things in this one. Uh, but yeah, so let's get to it. So, uh, first off, we'll talk about uh, some of those important things we did talk in the last few videos, just in case you haven't seen them, and just to make sure we're all on the exact same page and we know what we're talking about. After that, I'll isolate and talk about the differences between armors and weapons, and what makes weapon crafting so different and so complicated from making armors. Uh, then I'll focus on a lot of the considerations we need that are particular for weapons. Uh, things like optimizing our status, our element, and our range. And finally, I'll do a brief talk on tools and staffs and how we can forge and make those better. Uh, there might be brief spoilers during the upgrading section, because uh, I'll be talking about upgrade materials and where we find them. So I'll briefly be visiting some of the post-game sections. Um, I will give a warning just before that happens, uh, a spoiler warning, and then I will tell you when you can come back to see the end bits, like the tools and staffs. So yeah, uh, so a quick summary, if you haven't seen this first video, please do that. But basically, we talk about how we can use up to three items that we want uh, during crafting to grant their full effect, and these are very, very good and very, very strong. After that, we can use up to nine items during upgrading uh, with diminishing effects if we repeat them. Um, and that we can change equipment appearance by using it in a recipe. Uh, so basically what that means is that if we want to make a shirt with the stats of a vest, uh, we can make a vest, then we can make a shirt and put the vest inside the shirt, and that way we will have a shirt with the stats of a vest. Uh, and then in our weapon video, we spoke about a few things that makes weapon unique, makes weapons unique. Uh, so normally you can make, uh, you can use weapons in crafting the same way you can make armors, but thanks to this item called Light Lore, we can also use different types of weapons. Uh, so normally what this means is that if I craft a spear like this, with a spear and a sword, it doesn't work, but if I use this item called Light Lore, which you can just mine, uh, I will have created a spear with the stats of a longsword, uh, which you can see there. So I use the Calibern, a very strong longsword, to make a normal spear, and this spear has 13,000 attack. Uh, and basically this means that we can make the strongest weapons look like whatever we want. Uh, we also briefly talk about elements and how elements can do different amounts of damage depending on the enemy's resistances. And we also talked about how each element has extra effects, like how wind can make you attack faster. Uh, I do just briefly want to cover a few errors I made in the last video. I'd like to thank Ankoku on YouTube for pointing these out. Uh, so one of them that they mentioned was that the spear charge attack is actually pretty strong. So in my video I said the charge attack was pretty weak because I thought that it is a few hits and then one stab that knocks people back. However, what Ankunku pointed out is that uh, I can keep mashing the attack button to attack many many times before that final stab, uh, which is good for lots of damage. So I can just keep hitting this poor orc until he gets hit by the finisher. Uh, so yeah, that's very good damage, especially early game. Uh, late game, it's probably a bit outclassed by this rune ability uh, called William Strike, but it's still quite nice for where it's at early in the game. Uh, the second thing Ankoku pointed out was that enemies can be grabbed during a stun animation. Uh, so these gloves have been modified to have really high stun. And uh, so normally, as you can see, I hit them and they enter the stun animation. Uh, what Ankoku pointed out is that in this fun animation, I can very easily grab the enemy. Uh, so that's very nice for using those grab attacks. But yeah, so thanks Ankoku for pointing that out. Uh, and if anyone else sees any issues in any of the videos I talk about, uh, please let me know. Uh, I try my best, but I'm not perfect. Uh, so yeah, uh, now let's talk about this video. So armors and weapons are different. Um, so basically the main differences are uh, one, they have different bonuses. They can bon give bonuses in different things. Uh, two is that rarity is more significant on weapons. And finally, there are unique upgrades uh, for weapons. So let's go through that one by one. So armor and weapons and their bonuses. Um, so normally stats work for both armor and weapons. Uh, so I can make a longsword and I can give the longsword bonus defense. Uh, actually, let's make a spear for now. 
Uh, I'm gonna make a normal spear, uh, this wood stuff. And so, basically, I can upgrade this wood stuff with any normal stat and it'll work. So I can give this wood stuff defense from his iron, and it goes from defense plus two to defense plus three, uh, thanks for that one piece of iron. So armor and weapons both get full stats, uh, there is no issue with that. However, what their differences are is resistances. So if you take into account elemental resistance, uh, so armor can have elemental resistance added to it, uh, as well as status resistance, but weapons do not get elemental and status resistance. Uh, so if I get the same wood stuff and I try and upgrade it with not an iron, but a, let's go with this mealy apple. So this mealy apple gives uh, strength, vitality, and intelligence, and loses resistances. Uh, if I upgrade it with the wood stuff, if I upgrade the wood stuff with the mealy apple, I get the changes to strength, vitality, and intelligence to the stats, but not to the resistances. Uh, so that's a very, very important. Uh, so same deal with statuses. Uh, if I try and upgrade it with the uh, where is it? Uh, this uh, this left rock shard. Uh, this thing gives poison, seal, paralyze, resistances, and stuff like that. Uh, here, the wood stuff will get the defense bonus and the magic defense bonus, but won't get those resistances. Uh, so yeah, that's very very important. Uh, instead, we can give status attacks and elemental attacks to our weapons, uh, but not their resistances. Uh, as for reactions, so I call crit, knock, dizzy, and stun reactions. Oddly enough, you can increase those stats on your armor and on your weapons, but you can only get resistances through your armor. Uh, so this is actually relatively important and interesting. Um, for the main reason being that I spoke about how good and strong melee apples are, on your armors uh, because they give you huge resistances and also spoke about how good cores are because they give you resistance to non-elemental damage. Weapons can't have those things and because of that uh, there's no clear-cut like best uh, items for the most part. We actually get a whole lot more slots that are free. We don't need half of our slots to be melee apples and green core. Uh, instead we're going to focus more on getting high stats, uh, getting the element did Shapa just fall? Oh, that's the town event, I think. Is it? Probably. Uh, high elements, high status, and reactions if we have the space. But there's one more thing that's very important to consider, uh, and that is rarity. So in the first video, I spoke about how rarity is relatively unimportant, especially for armor, but for weapons, uh, that is not true. Rarity is quite important for weapons. Uh, the main reason being that you get a lot more stats for weapons than armor. Uh, with armor you get about 800 events at maximum rarity. For weapons you get 2000 attack, which is huge. Uh, what's more is if you go slightly below that rarity, uh, below this value of 200, you go from plus 2000 attack to plus 1000 attack. Effectively by changing one item we can lose 1000 attack, which is huge. Uh, so to get this maximum rarity bonus, basically we want the rarities of each upgrade material we use to hit at least 200. Anything extra doesn't matter. And each item has a range from 0 to 15. We can use up to 15 items. I'm going to walk away so Xiao Pai stops distracting me. Uh, we can use up to 15 items, which means we have a maximum of 225. Uh, what can be a bit of a problem though is if you're trying to use a different weapon in, in our crafting. Uh, weapons tend to have zero rarity, so instead of having 225, we already lose 15 rarity points. We already max out at 210. To make that even worse, 10 fold steel has a rarity of 10 uh, instead of 15, so we lose 5 more rarity and only have 205. That means we only have 5 spare rarity points we can use, and that means if we want to maximize our rarity, we actually have very few options. We can't play around a lot with our weird upgrade materials. Uh, but I'll get to that in a bit. Basically, just keep in mind that high rarity is quite important for weapons if you want to get this huge 2000 attack bonus. Uh, but yeah, so now with that done, let's talk about all the cool things you can do with weapons. Uh, so one of those cool things are status. Uh, basically, if you deal damage with a weapon, enemies have a chance of being inflicted with status. Uh, I'm going to use my own custom longsword for this. So this longsword has nice poison, paralyze, and faint attack. And basically, if I hit some random enemies, uh, you can see particles where they get a bunch of statuses. So this poor woolly 
I think got hit by all of them. Got hit by the Faint, Poison, and Para. I saw it briefly before it died. Uh, so yeah, uh, this makes it very, very nice and very, very good. Um, so to inflict a status, you just need the status of the attack, and you do damage with your weapon. Uh, so if an enemy is immune to your attack, it won't receive the status. Um, the chance of succeeding depends on your status attack and their resistance. And in general, bosses are immune to statuses, but not all of them. Um, so yeah, it depends. And not all statuses are equal. So going through them all, uh, poison deals percent HP damage over time, which is really quite nice uh, if enemies are stronger than you. Um, so early and mid game, if you're trying to go, if you're trying to like sequence break or try and like not craft, uh, poison is very good to defeat very strong enemies. Uh, seal is quite nice, so seal prevents the enemy from using some attacks, uh, especially good for mages. In a lot of dungeons, there are a lot of mages. And so they'll do their animation, but the animation will fail, which is a huge and nice opening for you. Paralysis stops the enemy from moving, uh, quite nice as well for crowd control and to make more openings and to keep safe. And sweep stops the enemy from doing anything. So these are all pretty pretty nice. Uh, poison and paralysis are probably the most common statuses, followed by seal, and sleep is relatively rare. Uh, we have four other statuses. So fatigue and sick don't really seem to do anything, uh, but they exist. And faint is very, very good. Faint instantly defeats an enemy, and some bosses, uh, specifically the fairies, are actually susceptible to faint. So faint is actually very, very good. And as I said in the weapon video, uh, some long swords, the katanas, natively have huge faint attack, which is very, very good. Uh, drain is the last one. So drain allows you to recover a percentage of the damage dealt, uh, which is very, very good for keeping you alive, uh, especially if your defense is quite high. So yeah, um, all up faint is really, really good. Poison, seal, paralysis, sleep all have their own uses, and drain is very, very nice if you want to survive. Fatigue and Sick, not so much. Uh, however, they are still nice for leveling up, because if you have the Fatigue attack or the Status attack, you will develop resistances to that in your skill levels. So it's really up to you. Okay, so there are a few materials uh, we can use for Status. Uh, one of the earlier ones you can get is actually the Holy Spore. Uh, so you get that here in Sophia Plain. Uh, but oddly enough, you can only get it on Fridays. So to get it before you do anything else, I'd recommend you go here to Clock Clock Nest and save the game. Um, so I'm going to do that now. The reason being that um, the enemy appears on Fridays to the right, and to the right, and here. Uh, he does a lot of statuses, as you can see, I'm sealed. Uh, but if we kill him, he has a chance of dropping the Holy Orb. I'm oh, sorry, Holy Spore. Ah, which he did. Or she. Do mushrooms have genders? I don't know. Uh, and yeah, so it gives Poison, Seal, and Paralyze attack, as well as Drain Resistance. Uh, in the first video, I said Holy Spore can be used for Drain Resistance, but there's no point. Um, but it, its better use is for the attack stats. Oddly enough, this means that if you use it on a weapon, you won't get the resistances, but if you use it on a sh armor, you won't get the attacks. So it's a weird item where you can't actually use all the benefits on one piece. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's very nice because it's rare. Its difficulty is quite low, so you can actually use it early in mid-game. And its rarity is relatively low as well, though, so that means that if you use it for upgrading, uh, you won't hit the 200 rarity threshold, which is bad. But it's still quite nice for the status attacks. Um, but yeah, so if it doesn't drop the Holy Spore, you'll have to reload your game, uh, because if you ever leave, it'll just completely go away. So yeah, it's not going to come back even if I do use the escape trick. So yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the seal briefly while I bring out the next slide. Okay, so the next good status material is the Melody Bottle. Uh, so this is a post game item, but it gives you 10% 10, uh, 10 status attack to most statuses in the game, as well as 1% faint attack, and some decent actual offensive stats as well. The priority is 15, which means we can use it without any cost and still maintain the 2,000 attack bonus. Uh, but yeah, so I'll talk about where to get this later on. Uh, we have the Chimera Tail as well, which is really, really good. So same deal post-game, but it gives you a 50% poison and paralysis attack. Very, very nice. As well as a huge two launched attack. Uh, this is probably one of the best weapon materials in the game. The two launched attack is I believe the second highest attack boosting item 
and it gives you statuses. So yeah, you should really use the Chimera Tail if you can. And its rarity of 15 is also very, very nice. The last item that is nice for status is the giant golden vegetable, um, particularly the giant golden turnip, which you can get from your farm with giantizer and big uh, golden turnips. Uh, so the giant golden turnip gives 2% faint and 90 strength with rarity of 14, which is very, very nice. Uh, if you want to spec faint, this is your option, but if you don't care, it's probably not your best. So yeah, with that being said, these are probably the best options for status and I would recommend you use them if you do like to use statuses. Now the next thing I want to talk about are elemental materials. Um, so I briefly spoke about them in the last video, in the weapon video, but basically if you upgrade an item with an elemental crystal, uh, so let's upgrade our, what did I make recently? Our wood stuff. Upgrade my wood stuff with any elemental crystal, like this fire crystal, I will gain the fire element. Okay, sorry. So right now it's the earth element. So if I upgrade it with any crystal, I will lose the earth element. And then if I upgrade it with any crystal after that, I will gain the next element. So here I'm using a wind crystal. So the wood stuff will become wind elemental. Uh, as for where you get these crystals, there are two main ways. One is from gates. So the gates that spawn enemies. And the other is from random quests. Uh, basically, Eliza might give quests and Every time you complete a quest with random quests, so they may give you some crystals. Uh, a bit of a problem is the rarity is quite low. Uh, it maxes out at 12 with light, but some like fire are at seven. Uh, this means that if you try and change elements a lot uh, when you're upgrading, you will probably not hit that threshold. But yeah, um, so there's that. And the second really cool elemental item is the shade stone. Okay, so to get the Shade Stone, you want to fly to Obsidian Mansion, or I can just walk west. And here in the Obsidian Mansion, oops, okay, I forgot something. Uh, you need to grab your hammer. So I'm going to go to my storage, grab my hammer, and while I'm here, I'll grab my fishing pole and my hoe, just because we might need it later. Okay. So I'm going to go to the Obsidian Mansion, and if you go left one screen and left again, and then down, the screen will become very dark. Now when we're very dark, there might be a mining a mining ore at the very bottom, which there doesn't seem to be. So I might just need to come back another day. Um, so I'm gonna do that now, um, while I keep talking. So what the Shade Stone does is it decreases an enemy's resistance by 50%. Uh, so if an enemy is resistant, it will go down. If the enemy isn't, it'll do nothing. Uh, and that's very, very good if an enemy is slightly resistant, because they will then take full damage. The problem is, of course, that the rarity is very low. Uh, since the rarity is very low, we're not going to hit that threshold, which is sad. But yeah, uh, so if you are using it, it's good to use it during the crafting process. Um, but yeah. So here I visualized the effects of the Shades then. Um, so as you can see, uh, on the left side, I have described it the resistances of enemies to each element uh, without the Shade Stone. And to the right, you see the effects with the Shade Stone. And as you can see, uh, some elements like Earth especially get very, very good uh, thanks to the effects of the Shade Stone. So here, a lot of enemies are resistant. Once to the Shade Stone, all of them aren't. Um, and yeah, they also lose some, some enemies that did absorb, no longer absorb, uh, especially in like this light category. Um, and the, yeah, so light category, okay, light category turns resistant enemies to non-resistant. Um, but, yeah, um, they're still very, very nice. Some enemies that absorb fire are now resistant, which is very good. Um, so yeah, Shade Stone is very nice, especially for elements like Earth. Um, and stuff like that, and Wind as well. Uh, here's the same plot, but only for bosses. Um, as you can see here, it had more enemies are a bit resistant to elements if they're bosses. Uh, but yeah, so overall, I quite just like using it if I'm not going to bother changing elements. So if I'm going to use a wind element weapon, and I'm not going to change the element. I'll use the shade stone instead. If I am, I'm probably not going to bother. Not enough slots to change the element uh, and use the shade stone. But yeah, um, so yeah, it depends ultimately on what you're trying to do. 
Okay, this is again the last try, maybe the fourth time of the charm. Uh, but yeah, so the shades then should appear there, just go by there every single day. Um, you can. And it's, oh, there it is. Nice, perfect timing. Okay, so yeah, it's here. I'm going to hammer it. You can see the mineral. Missed. Okay, hit it a few times. And it should hopefully drop into shades then. So right now I'm holding scrap metals, so that's not what I want. Is that the irons? Yep. Did I just, okay, I might have just had the same bad luck. Okay. Yeah, shade stones have been born. But yeah, so shade stones should appear there. Uh, it'll take a bit too long to keep on going. Wait, did I see it? Maybe. I'll check quickly. Yeah, no, no shade stones appeared. Oops. But yeah, uh, so that's just the luck. Go by there every day and eventually you'll hopefully find one. Okay, it's storming, so I'll get rid of the storm. Okay, so with that in mind, elements are very, very nice and worth changing if you want new effects or if you want to just shade stone to increase your damage. The next thing I want to talk about is range, uh, which is very, very good on weapons. Uh, basically because you want to make sure that you aren't in enemy's range. The bigger your range, the safer you are. So this longsword, for example, has max range. Uh, what this means is if I'm here and I'm far away, I can hit that gate all the way from this side of the field, which is very, very safe. This bully isn't going to hit me at all if I'm hitting them from this far away. So how a range works is that weapons have range stats that are innate to the weapon. Uh, so most, so all fists have a range of 0.95. Most swords have a range of 1. Some of them have a range of 1.2. Some are higher. Uh, in this column on the right, I show the ranges of what I think are the best weapons of each class. So the best longsword has a range of 1.6. Uh, but yeah. So there are two ways you can increase range. One is from material upgrades, which we'll talk about now, and one is from accessories, which I'll talk about next time. But the maximum range you can reach with your weapon and upgrades is four, uh, starting from here. And so one of the materials you can use to upgrade is the Glitter Ore Guide, which increases your range by 0.5. So it'll go from, if I go up again, uh, a long sword is 1.6, adding up by 0.5, it'll bring it to 2.1. So, where do we actually get Glitter Ore Guide? Oddly enough, it's the same place as the Obsidian Ore, or as the Shade Stone, uh, near the Obsidian Manor. So I'm gonna walk there this time. But instead of going down, uh, we're gonna go, so two left, instead of going down, where the Shade Stone was, oh, huh, it appeared. I'm gonna try my luck. Maybe this time a shade's been a little here. Oh yeah, shade's been. Cool. Power of complaining. In fact, I've got five shade stones. Two of them are level 10. Okay, that's very, very nice. Uh, but yeah, I'm sad that like I'm not gonna save. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so to get the glitter orchid, you mainly get it from your farm from an item called the shack from the twinkle tree that you grow. But to get the twinkle tree, we go to this tree and we have a chance of getting twinkle seeds. Uh, we can go there once a day. Here we got a grape seed, so I'll have to come back tomorrow. Um, but I will get a twinkle tree seed eventually, and I can plant in my farm a twinkle tree, which you can see here. And what happens is if I use my axe to chop the twinkle tree, um, I have a chance of getting this glitter orchid, which is very, very good. So yeah, um, basically you get one tree, keep hitting it, and eventually you'll get glitter orchid. Uh, important tip, for cutting down trees if you didn't know. Um, so with a magnifying glass, you can see the tree's stats. And each time you hit it, its HP will drop. So you can see the tree's HP to the left of my screen, which is 39. If I hit it a few times, um, it'll go down. So now it's 36. If it goes too low, the tree will die. To increase its health, uh, you want to get a withered grass or a four leaf clover or something. Equip your hoe, hit the withered, Grass and the HP will go up from 46 up to 66. Uh, four leaf clovers are the most efficient, so I like to use those. But yeah, so Glitter Orc Guide increases the range by 0.5, which is very nice. Uh, the problem is its rarity is 8, so again, you can't hit the threshold. Uh, the other one also works, so Raccoon Leaf has a range increase of 0.25, which is half that of the Glitter Orc Guide. But it does give 40 intelligence and has a slightly higher rarity. Um, but overall, I would recommend you use the Glitter Ore Guide. Raccoon Leaf, you get post-game as well, unfortunately. 
So yeah, um, basically to briefly summarize, uh, we start from our normal range and we can use Glitter Archives and Raccoon Leaves to hit a max range of 4. Um, basically this does mean that tenfold thing, Glitter Archive isn't really worth it. So Glitter Archive is 0.5, a tenfold steel Glitter Archive gives an increase of 4, which will always hit the maximum. So there's no point in tenfolding a Glitter Archive. Uh, to easily hit this, you want to use it in crafting, so you get the full effect each time, and maybe double steal it. So if you use three Glitter All Guides in crafting, use one in upgrading, and use a double steal after. But that's six Glitter All Guides, which should hit the maximum for basically everything. So yeah, that's more efficient than using a tenfold steal. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I'll quickly visualize that range indicator briefly. So here, if I use my normal gloves, uh, you can see the small bit of range when I hit the enemy. You can see the small green thing. Uh, this is the max range blue-eyed blade. Uh, this is just the indicator. The actual range is much, much larger. But yeah, so if I get the spear as well, sorry, this is the actual spear. You can see a slightly longer range. But if I get normal gloves and I tenfold steal it, uh, which I'll just do briefly. Um, if I make, let's make dual blades actually, so I don't get confused. I'm making a short dagger. I'm going to operate its range with the good all guide. And I'm going to tenfold steal it. So that'll give it the maximum range of four. Um, and I'll show you that this weapon, so here's my longsword, which is max range. You can see the indicator of the weapon just goes past that lot, just basically goes past the bottom door. I'm going to my short dagger. You can see it has exactly the same range uh, because we hit that 4.0 limit. But yeah, so that is why weapon range is very nice. It's very good to keep you safe and to do damage from a distance. Uh, range is very, very nice. Uh, again, this isn't the only way to increase range. You can do that with accessories as well, but I'll talk about that next time. Okay, uh, the next important thing that weapons can give is drain attack. And there are two main ways you can get drain attack. Uh, the most efficient is by a legendary scale. Um, so, legend so drain attack, again, heals you if you do damage. And the best place to get the legendary scale is from Dragon Lake. If we go here uh, and we get a fishing rod, every time we fish, we have a slight chance of getting a legendary scale. Um, the chances of getting a legendary scale is actually incredibly low, so this is a huge pain. Um, you might get it faster through some other method, um, but yeah, so good luck. I'm not going to try that here. It took me forever to get it in this game, but it's very, very nice. Oddly enough, the other item used to get Drain Attack is also really hard, and that's the Log Crystal. So the Log Crystal only gives 3% Drain Attack, but it does change your element to Love, and Love is actually a very good attacking element. So to get that, um, you get it from random quests and gates, uh, like with any other crystal. The weird thing is that the only gates that drop Love Crystals are post-game, and you're actually much more likely to get it from random quests before then. So yeah, I would just encourage you to do Eliza's quests every day and try and make sure you get a Love Crystal. Uh, the rarity of this one is only 9, which is bad, but the legendary scale gives a, range, uh, gives a rarity of 15, which is very, very good. So yeah, I would encourage you to, you to basically do your best to try and get them. They are nice to keep you healthy and alive. Uh, we're going to briefly talk about other weird upgrade materials. Um, so one of them is the Invisible Stone. And what the Invisible Stone does is it makes weapon and armor invisible. Um, so this is technically a... This technically works for armors as well. I just didn't talk about it because I think it's pretty weird. But basically if I make a longsword and I either craft with or upgrade with an Invisible Stone, which is here, uh, the weapon is going to be invisible. So there's my... Here's my claymore. As you see, well, as you can't see, uh, my long sword. Uh, you get invisible, you get uh, invisible stones just for mining uh, in random ores. Ooh, that's a chest. Uh, but yeah, so I would encourage you to, I guess, 
keep an eye out for invisible ores. You can see the particles if you hit the stone and maybe chase up if it's there, but really it's pretty pointless. There's not much point to using them. It works with armor as well, so I can make an invisible hat if I don't like wearing hats, but I like the hats. Okay, uh, the next other one is Scrap Metal Plus. So Scrap Metal Plus reduces damage dealt to one. Um, so to get Scrap Metal, basically you just fail at forging. Um, so I'm going to try and craft a shirt using, I think my example from the other video was milk. Or I'll just use turnips this time. I'm going to try and craft a shirt out of turnips. I'll fail. And each of my failures will turn into Scrap Metal or Scrap Metal Plus. Um, so most of them became Scrap Metal, but you can see a few Scrap Metal Pluses. You can just keep trying. And Scrap Metal Plus reduces damage dealt to one. Um, so basically, yeah. I'll only do one damage when I hit enemies. Um, so like I briefly mentioned in the materials video, this is mainly good for getting tenfold steel. Uh, in Leon Karnak, if I go up, if I go up to the right, and if I go right one more, we'll find these minerals, we'll find these enemies. Uh, some of them are called mineral squeaks, and mineral squeaks drop a double steel or a tenfold steel whenever they get hit, like this one. They have four health, uh, so if you use a normal weapon, they will die in one hit and they won't drop double steals. Uh, well, they will only drop one. With a scrap metal plus, they will drop four. So yeah, just be efficient if you want to use that. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's not really much use. I think you can also use it to increase your weapon stats if you want. Sorry, your weapon skill level. Like, because you let me do use gloves, I can increase my glove skill level by hitting these enemies. Uh, that's another potential use, but I wouldn't really bother with that. It's mainly just for getting tenfold steel. Um, so yeah, so with that done, uh, I'm going to talk about other high rarity items. So items that you can use to increase your stats and make sure you have high rarity for a high attack. And I'll show where I get them. Uh, this will be in post game sections, so spoiler time now. Okay, so, spoilers. Um, so, the best high rarity material that we can use, as well as the one that increases our stats the most, is the Fire Room Scale. Uh, you get that in the Sharan's Maze, in Smoldering Prominence, where we fight Dean, which is very nice, and it gives 300 strength. And this is really, really good. Because if we use a 10-fold steel, we get 8 times 300, so 2,400 attack, just from that one, two item slots to make 2,700 attack which is huge. Uh, that's why we're basically forced to use tenfold steel, um, even if it does drop the rarity, just because it gives so much attack with a firearm scale. Uh, the other high rarity item we might use for attack is the Wind Dragon Tooth, which you get from Dragon Ruins, which will give you 180 attack and 180 magic attack, as well as the rarity of 15. Uh, for the Rune Sphere Shard, you can get that in Challenge of Fantasy, Banquet of Nightmares, and the End of Rune Prana. I believe the chances are highest in Banquet of Nightmares, which is nice because it's a relatively rare drop in anywhere else. So yeah, your best bet to get Rune Spear Shards is the Banquet of Nightmares. And this one gives you 120 to all your primary stats, uh, which is quite nice, with a rarity of 15. Uh, Dangerous Scissors. Okay, so we're going to go to Rune Prana here. So Dangerous Scissors gives 195 attack and minus 50 defense. Um, but its rarity is 14, so one low, but it's still good enough that you can use it reliably. So we want to go to Rune Prana 5. So here we are on Leon, Leon Karnak. So 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this will be 5. Let's equip an actual weapon. And here we will find the Heaven Scissors, and they have a chance of dropping Dangerous Scissors. Uh, unfortunately, again, this is a relatively rare drop, so it might take a while. Um, but yeah. So just keep going at that. And oh, here we are. That was pretty lucky. Yep, so we got Dangerous Scissors, which gives 195 attack. So yeah, that's nice if you just want more attack. Uh, similarly, we can use Crimson Scale, which is only 140 strength, but still quite nice. Uh, we get that in... Uh, we get it in Rune Prana 4, so that's this one. Uh, we just want to go forward. Forward again. I think one more. Yep. I'm sort of the fire. And yes, yeah, so these fire dragons will eventually drop crimson scale. Uh, they're a bit annoying to kill just because they'll heal from the fire around you, so it might take a bit for them to die. 
but yeah, eventually you'll drop a crimson scale and you'll be happy. Uh, oddly enough, this does, like, fortunately enough, this does also count as a dragon scale. So this or your fire and scale are probably one up what you want to upgrade your shield with if you want to get a partial shield bonus if you're using shield, using dual blades or fists. Again, I wouldn't recommend you doing that. I'd recommend you creating a dual blade or a fist with light ore. But yeah. Oddly enough, the fun fact is that legendary scales... Ah, oh, here's the crimson scale. Uh, but yeah, oddly enough, legendary scales aren't dragon scales, uh, despite it coming from Dragon Lake, and also it dropping from Aquaticus, um, oddly enough. But yeah, so that's pretty strange. Okay, Icy Nose you get from Rune Prana 3, the Fossil Spheres you get Rune Prana 4, then walk backwards. So yeah, uh, this guy can drop an Icy Nose. Um, one more hit. And yeah, uh, the Ice Nose is rarity 15 with 128 attack. Here we are. But it also gives nice uh, crit, stun, and dizzy bonuses. So yeah, the Ice Nose is a nice all round item, as well as having rarity 15. So yeah, it's a nice filler item. Uh, and yeah, so briefly as well, the Chimera Tail and the Meldy Bottle, which I mentioned earlier. So Chimera Tail you get in Rune Prana 7. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go up. And then we're gonna go left, and here we'll find the Chimera. Um, so that this we pull quickly, and hopefully we will get our Chimera Tail, which is again a very good item because it gives huge status and huge attack. Um, I didn't drop it, but yeah, um, that's where you get it. Again, you can't get it from Chimera One. You can find a Chimera One in the Water Ruins, but he doesn't drop it, or he drops it very, very rarely. You're better off going here. Melody Bottle, you get in Rune Prana 5 at the end. So we're just gonna go to Rune Prana 6 and walk backwards. And yeah, um, this boss is actually pretty annoying because it resists like everything. So even if I have a Shade Stone, so it should normally have a set of and resist to win. So now it becomes 25%, um, but still. So Melody Bottles are interesting. Um, okay, so it didn't drop it this time. But what often happens in this fight is the Melody Bottle will drop in this lake in the middle. Um, and it might be hard for you to get it. Um, what you can do is if you drop an item in the lake, um, so I'm going to throw this rod in the lake, you can actually fish it, fish it out. So equip your fishing rod, throw it in, and immediately pull it out. And you will pull out the item that was dropped, the claymore that was dropped. Okay, so if the Melody Bottle drops, uh, don't stress out, just fish it out with your fishing pole. And that's how you get it. Uh, so yeah, I think that's in. Oh wait, uh, so briefly in the materials video, I spoke about a few items that are good for reactions. So the Tablet of Truth gives high crit, the final boss item gives high knock, and the Broken Ice Wall gives high spun. Uh, these are all nice, they all have rarity 15, except the final boss drop, which is only 14. But yeah, so you can use all of them as well to make your rarity very high if you want the extra reaction effects. So yeah, uh, use them as you wish. Okay, um, so yeah, I think with that, the spoilers are complete. Um, I'm just gonna walk away from here. Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so we were using a fishing pole here because now we're gonna talk about tools. And the main reason uh, is that there are a few ways you can optimize tools and a few weird things you can do with tools. Uh, so one of them briefly is I spoke about how different elements have different effects. Uh, the wind element makes you faster. So it's usually a good idea to make most of your tools wind elemental. Um, you aren't gonna use them for combat for the most part anyway. So you may as well just like make them slightly faster since you'll be hammering and axing a lot. Yeah, so just a thought. Uh, another fun thing is that magnifying glass imparts its effect on equipment in general. So again, you can actually use this on armor as well, or weapons, uh, but usually what people do is they put it on fishing poles, oddly enough. So I spoke before about how you can use the magnifying glass to look at your farm, so you can see the stats of stuff take off my magnifying glass, you can't see it. What people usually do is they upgrade their fishing pole with it. Um, 
So the main reason is that it just saves an equipment slot. You don't need to hold a magnifying glass everywhere. I think some people also like putting on under hats. You can use like a, I don't know, maybe the glasses so you can see into it if you think that's funny. Uh, but yeah, so you can do it on anything. It's nice to use on a fishing rod because you aren't going to use a fishing rod on your farm, but you're probably going to hold a fishing rod anyway. The other fun sacred pole trick is that you can actually uh, do some cool things with it when you use Lidor. So if I normally charge my sacred pole, it goes up to this yellow charge level. I think it's one, two, three, four, four levels? Maybe I lost count. Oops. Uh, this axe, on the other hand, only goes up to this white level. Uh, whereas the fishing pole goes past the white level into the yellow level. Um, so it gets one extra charge level of the fishing pole. However, if instead I make an act, uh, make a tool, make an axe, for example, or really anything here, and I use a light ore and a fishing pole, my axe actually gets an extra charge level. So here's the old axe, the boring axe. It gets that white charge level. And here is the cool new axe, which goes past the white charge level into the yellow charge level. Uh, let's go back into our field to show that. Okay, so here's the old axe. It hits in a nine by nine range, so I can hit all of these trees. The cool new axe gets the extra charge level and goes into a huge 16 by 16 range, uh, which is nice and big. Unfortunately, it's not so you could. Uh, there are some side effects. Uh, the most obvious one is that I still can't hit my entire farm, so I still need to use it twice. Uh, but secondly, it doesn't increase or use your skill levels. Um, so I'm not going to use my axe skill level or my hammer skill level with those. And that's pretty bad because it will mean I will probably get worse drops if I hammer or, uh, for example. So definitely don't use it on your hammers. The one thing I would consider is using it on your watering pots um, because oddly enough, the watering pot, um, normal watering pots use a lot of RP if they're fully charged. The fishing pole watering pot does not. But yeah, so if you just wanna have a higher charge level and hit a larger area, uh, light or sacred pole tools are actually really cool and really interesting. So yeah, um, that's that. The last thing I wanna end us on are staves. Um, staves, but staves, staves. Uh, so I, do I have a normal staff? Okay, no, I don't. So basically, I'm gonna make a normal staff in my thing, in my forge. And how staffs work is that starts, staffs gain charge attacks with level. So here's my normal staff. If I hit, I will shoot a fireball. If I hold the charge attack, nothing happens. If I upgrade my staff with any material, uh, I'm gonna upgrade it with iron. It'll increase its level by one to level two. And I will get a charge attack where I shoot two fireballs instead. I can do that up to two more times until it hits level four. So I'm gonna do that now. Where's my stuff? Do that two more times. So now it is level three and now it is level four. And now my staff gets up to a level three charge. Let's show you that now. So level one, so no charge attack. Level one charge, which is two fireballs. Level two charge, which is three fireballs. And level three charge, which is four fireballs. Now, what's really cool and interesting is you can upgrade your rod with different items to get different charge attacks. So here's the same staff and upgrade it with an earth crystal. And the Earth Crystal is one of those items that change your charge attacks. So here's my rod. The normal attack doesn't do anything. Uh, the next attack, okay, sorry. Actually, I'll spend it quickly. Uh, it doesn't do anything because it's not elemental. That's a unique staff thing uh, as well. But one charge attack is this Earth attack. Two charge attacks uh, makes it do the same thing, but faster. Uh, the next charge level is the same thing, but even bigger and faster. So yeah, uh, the Earth Crystal changed those things. Now, what's really, really cool is you can upgrade your staves with 
boss materials, and often you get some of the boss's effects. So here I'm going to upgrade with a lightning main, which is an item you get from Thunderbolt, the second boss. And now, if I use the same rod, uh, okay. one attack does nothing. Second attack are these three lines, next one are these five lines, and the final charge is this huge, like, you know, the lightning kick attack it does when it's enraged. So yeah, uh, these are actually very good because they're strong, boss, multi-hit attacks. Uh, sometimes it only gives you some attacks, so I'm going to upgrade my staff with a Dragon Burn, which you can get in the Revival Den, I think it's called. And the Dragon Burn only gives a level 3 charge attack, it doesn't change the level 2 or 1 charge attacks. So the level 1 charge attack is still the Lightning Lines, this one's still the Lightning Lines, but the last charge attack is... Sorry. The last charge attack is this booming laser ball and this is a really good attack uh, one more thing is that the charge rate of all your attacks depends on the last charge attack used so sorry the last charge attack we learned um, so the dragon bone has a longer charge time than the thunderbolt so everything takes longer to charge of course that means we can use that um, so instead of upgrading with the dragon with a dragon bone we can instead upgrade with another item, uh, which is the... Um, what am I going to do? Um, okay, every all the people's go-to example is the rainbow water pot, which is pretty funny. So I'm going to make a tool. I'm going to make a rainbow water pot. And this water pot... Uh, I'm going to upgrade my rod, so I'm going to unequip the rod. Um, I'm gonna use the Renwort as a material and I'm gonna upgrade my rod. And now the rod gets on its first charge level a really useless rainbow that uses a lot of RP. It's completely useless, but it makes every other attack super, super fast. So that, I mean, that way I can just keep using this very strong laser attack. Um, and just hit people from very far away with this holding light ball, which is really, really strong. So yeah, uh, staffs are very, very good. Uh, so yeah, basically to sum it up, uh, consider which attacks you want to use. Uh, it's usually best to leave those ones to the end after you use your stat upgrades. So use your level 8 and 9 upgrades to add strong attacks like the lightning bait, main or the dragon bone. You can use a level 10 upgrade to add a fast attack, like with the rainbow water pot, which is what we did, or the bird's feather. Uh, the bird's feather replaces the last charge attack. Uh, so if you want to use the first charge attack, you can use that. If you want to use the third one, you use the rainbow water pot. Uh, I have no plans yet, but if there's interest, I might continue the series by talking about all of the cool stuff materials. Uh, but yeah, that'll take a while. But yeah, so I think with that, we're basically done here. Uh, but let's just bring it all together for a brief bit. Um, so normally we can actually easily find the weapon with the highest attack, which is just pick all of the ones that increase the attack the most without dropping our rarity below 200. And that's just this setup. So use the highest attack weapon in the game, maps out with firearm scales, tenfold steel, and use as many high attack materials as you can. And our total attack is 21,414 with two extra rarity. Now, it's easy to see that this probably isn't your best build. Uh, you have no drain attack, for example, and you can easily add drain attack. You can get rid of this item, which only gives 121 attack, and get 10% drain instead. So this isn't perfect by any means, this is just one option. Um, the problem is that basically, so we can easily trade high attack materials for other high rarity materials and upgrade slots. Uh, we can remove any of those other attack items for a melody bottle or chimera tails for status, Legendary scale for drain or other materials for reactions like the Tablet of Truth or the Broken Wall. The problem is that we only have three crafting spots from which we can use other things that have low rarity. Uh, so range, uh, range increases, element changes, shade stone, and holy spore all are very low rarity. And if we use them in our upgrading, we will not get that max 2000 attack. 
So yeah, um, it's really up to you to decide. Personally, what I do is I don't bother hitting the max 200 and I drop down to the next category of 175. Uh, this lets me use the shade stone um, as well as good ore guides in the um, crafting section. Um, I use another good ore guide to make sure I hit max range with the double steel. So double steel also has a very low rarity, but everything else is high enough that I still am above 175. And this also lets me use a holy spore. So I lose about, compared to the first one, which is 21,000 attack, I have 16,000 attack, so I lose about 5,000. But I gain drain, I gain more status, and I gain shade stone, and I gain a huge amount of range. Uh, this is a build made by Omnigamer, uh, where what they do is they put love crystals and holy spore in crafting, and then they try and make sure they have high rarity after that, and it looks like this. So this one has about 3,000 attack lower than the first one I showed, but it is love element. It has 50% faint from heaven asunder, it has bitter status, and it has huge drain and critical, and it uses the final boss item to get more knock as well. So yeah, uh, there is no one perfect build. Uh, feel free to use whatever you want. I'll talk more about how we actually decide our final builds uh, in a later on, in the fifth video, in the, in the next video in the series. Oh. In the final video of the series. So yeah, uh, just to conclude, uh, weapon crafting is a compromise between attack stats, status, element, range, drain, and reactions. There is no single right answer, use whatever you want, and just try and keep in mind these things if you want to make your own set. Then we spoke about how light ore lets us do cool things with weapons and tools, like basically making our tools have a higher range or letting us use whatever weapons we want. And finally, we talked about how spots are complicated and that we might get to them later. So yeah, uh, that's basically gonna be this video. Uh, as always, thank you again for watching so much. It means a lot to me. Uh, comments, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you wanna see a staff video. Let me know what your favorite weapon builds are. Actually, yeah, that'll be really interesting. Uh, if you have your own weapon build, uh, I'd be very curious to see it. Uh, I might chuck it in my final build video as well, if I, if I have your permission. But yeah, as always, thank you for watching, and keep tuned for the next one. See you next time.